your headline is the most important copy on the page. And for SaaS and apps, that headline usually answers this question for visitors. What can I get out of this solution that I want and that I can't get in the same way anywhere else? The answer to that question is essentially your value proposition. If you're in marketing for SaaS or apps, chances are good your team wants your homepage headline to be your software or app's value proposition. But what is a value prop and how can you draft a whole bunch of customer facing value props that you can actually use on your homepage as the headline? This is your tutorial of the week. To use it, block 30 minutes in your calendar to watch it. It does not have to be today. Invite your team to join you, watch it together, create action items and do the work I show you open the right tool for the job like your CMS right now and let's get going. So there are big old books on how to develop your product's value prop, but those books are just like I described them big, like huge with matrices and worksheets and all sorts of work for you to do. And that is valuable work to be perfectly clear. However, you don't really have a ton of time to develop your value prop wording, do you? So. Let's take the next few minutes to walk through not only five value prop formulas you should test right away on your homepage, but also what a value prop even is. A value prop is a succinct statement that expresses to your target market what's unique about your product that they desire. As in, your value prop tells your prospect you want this desirable thing and we've got it. Then everything that follows that value prop basically demos or explains how. So. What does your prospect want when they land on your homepage? Do you offer them that? And if so, how do you offer it? Now, the how doesn't have to appear in the value prop headline, but you will need to have a really clear, strong how lined up and ready to express in your page's body copy. Without an expression of your value prop on your homepage, you can see high bounce rates because Quite frankly, your visitors just don't have the most basic answer to the most basic question. What can I get out of this solution that I want and that I can't get in the same way anywhere else? When you answer that question well, in as few words as possible, without losing specificity, you can see improvements in bounce. So let's get cracking on those value prop formulas. Before we dive right into those formulas, I know I just promised them to you. Um, I wanted to quickly walk you through some thinking to do if you're not ready to jump into formulas, you don't yet know what your value prop is maybe. And that's completely fair. So here are some ways to think through it. These are just, this is very simple. I find it quite useful to keep it really nice and simple. Don't overthink this. What I want you to do is, as you can see showing here, um, is go through and think about your jobs to be done, like your prospect's job to be done, uh, both the immediate job to be done and that future job to be done. And then just fill in the blank. So you don't have to do this, like there's no worksheet that you have to fill in. You can just like type this into a doc, like open a doc right now, which you'll need anyway for the formulas exercise and just complete it. And frankly, what often completes this you want statement, this blank here, can become a headline unto itself. So that that can be a pretty cool shortcut. Um, it does require that you just sit down and think through it. So what's the immediate functional job to be done? You want, and that is your prospect, you want what? What functional job are they trying to do? What immediate emotional social job do they want this product to do for them? What are they hiring it to do? What is that immediate emotional or personal job to be done. So the first three are immediate. And then we want to think about future. And now future varies, right? Your product might be if it's a mattress, it might pay off way down the road, or it might pay off immediately. Um, but there's unlikely to be like a three month period, it's more like get a good night's sleep the first night, you'll know immediately. And then a year from now, you'll have, you know, fewer back issues and greater energy overall, like that future state. Whereas other things, some software might have a future state. If it's reporting software, the immediate functional job to be done might be one thing that's quite immediate having to do with like setting something up or having that sense 
this wouldn't be, this would be more of this, this sense of, okay, your team's work is under control, that's good. Um, whereas in the future, there might be like a month from now or for your quarterly reports, if it's a reporting software, then you might have a different job to be done that's functional, social, and impersonal at that time. So think through those before you dive into anything else. Now let's take a look at these formulas and then I'll show them to you in practice. Okay. So the first formula, all you want to do with these formulas is just replace the curly brackets with the instruction inside of it. So change or transform or turn, you'll choose one of these words. Some industries transform is a really good word. Other times it's not change might be <laughs> turn might be, they're all basically synonymous. And if you have a different word that feels maybe less white noisy, like change and turn can feel because they're short words and there's not enough, like there's not a lot going on with them. When you use them, they can just kind of fall flat. So feel free if not, if none of these words are working for you, crack open the the source <laughs> .com doesn't have to be the real like handheld one. Um, and look up different words and just what you want to make sure is that you're not sacrificing clarity, but you do want to use a word that people will notice. It's the first word in your headline. You want it to be a good word. Okay. The point there will be what's that transformation that they're going to have with your product. So that requires then that you think about the thing that they have and the thing that they want in this case for this formula. So I'll show you some examples of this right away, but think about the thing that they have. If you're dealing with, if you're like in a project management software, I always jump to project management software for some reason, but if that's what you're writing a headline for a value prop headline for a homepage, what is the thing that they have? They have, a team, they have hours in a day, they have checklists, they have task lists, they have spreadsheets, maybe. Um, what are some of those things that they have? Feel free to brainstorm those things. And then what do they actually want? And how can they turn that checklist, those hours, those resources into the thing that they want? They want hit deadlines, completed projects, happy clients, those kinds of things. So put in happy clients, let's say you might do something like that. Um, so transform, something like that, right? That doesn't mean that it has to be that, but that's what might be what we do. And if you find it easier to start with the thing that they want, maybe that's because you've just gone through this exercise with the different jobs to be done, filling in this blank, then that's cool. And sometimes it's just the easiest thing for us to jump to because we typically know the benefit or the outcome or that desired state that our prospect is looking for. We don't necessarily immediately think, oh, my prospect has all of these team members to transform into all of these results. So start with the thing that they want and then go in and fill this part in. That'll be numero uno. Then we're going to try another one. Desirable outcome of the product from the people who made it. So this is, this won't be <laughs> useful to you if your product is not made by people who are like a no brainer fit for making it. So you think about, you know, the Kardashians and Jenners, and maybe you don't, God bless you. <laughs> if you are so lucky as to not have them in your feed. Um, but, uh, Kylie Jenner was a good natural, no brainer fit for a lip kit. Um, because at the time she was pretending those were hers. Um, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, don't take that. Don't take that anywhere. It's understood that there was some cosmetic help there. Um, anyway, but the point here is, does your product have a sort of no brainer maker? If it's made for engineers, is it also made by engineers? If it's made for teachers, is it also, is it also made by teachers? That kind of thing. If so, then you put from your favorite neighborhood teachers um, and the desirable outcome of the product. So this is the value prop, right? This is your value proposition is what am I going to get out of it? What is in it for me? Um, and that's all you want to really put here is what that desirable outcome is. And again, that could be the you want line, the future functional job, the immediate social job, whatever that thing might be. Next up, the adjective noun for a primary use case. So start with the noun. What is it? Unless you know your adjective, right? So this is like the adjective noun part is really getting down to your differentiators in a lot of cases. 
if one of your key differentiators is that your product is beautifully designed. That's likely to be the adjective that goes here, unless your prospect doesn't care about it, because that's a big part of value proposition design is the thing that I offer that's different needs to also be something that my prospect wants. So your product may be beautifully designed, but if your prospect doesn't care, then that's not going to be the right adjective to have here. If it's fast, if it's inexpensive, any number of different adjectives might fit in here. Just make sure it's what your prospect wants. That is aligned with what your business wants to say, because most people do like inexpensive. However, um, that might not be what your business actually wants to go into the world and say. So this is really where you're talking about your how in that adjective. The noun is effectively your category. So whatever software you're in, project management, financial management, investing, I don't know. And then the primary use case. Um, and I'll show you some examples right away to really help you make sense of these. Then comes the adjective way for segment. So this is a market segment to achieve an action or an outcome so that you can and then get that benefit. This is a really, really common value proposition formula. So it, it's not terribly inspired, but it can be clear. It can also be long. <laughs> so sometimes I find that when I'm using this, I fill this formula in as I'll show you. And then I just take this part, the benefit part here and see if that can stand alone as the value prop headline itself if the benefit is clearly stated. Sometimes you need all of these parts up front because that's really where you're talking about your differentiators, right? The blank way, that's like your differentiator. We do it differently, this is how we do it. Um, and so that's worth considering. Also, if you're targeting a certain market segment, then this can be your differentiator too. You might be project management software for teachers. And that's like, wow, nobody targets teachers for project management software. So that could be your differentiator, in which case you might then be able to cut things. It could be how teachers blank take action or get an outcome so you can blank. Um, but just keep that in mind. This is going to be a long one. It's going to be really value proposition E and kind of traditional sounding. It's really up to you once you've filled this in and filled it in a few different ways to go ahead and try to make it better. Keep in mind, obviously, that a formula is always a really good starting point, and sometimes it gets you to the very end. But if it doesn't, work it, rework it, make it work um, however you can. Final formula. So this is how, then your market segment, so whoever that group is you're trying to talk to. Um, and this is why it can also work really well as a landing page headline, value props as headlines on landing pages are phenomenal too. In fact, the more you start using value propositions and really thinking through them, the more you realize that all the great messages you've seen over time have really been value props. Um, so it's really worth getting into this. So how market segment. So again, that's the segment you're targeting. Uh, this is the desired outcome that they have. So it'll, it'll be a verb how they do blank, um, but it's really all talking about their desired outcome. It doesn't mean that it's always going to start with do or be or get. It might be something far more meaningful, a much better verb than those. And then this is the obstacle that gets in their way. So think about what is preventing your prospect from success with the current solution that they're using. And you take that away, assuming that's true for your value, like that's true for your product. And that's actually part of your value proposition. Now, a lot of times we are unclear on our value props. So if you're looking at this going, none of these work or only one of these will work or wow, all five of these work, um, dive in, try them. You might have to make some things up sometimes. And that's just, that's true. That's a lot of copywriters throughout history have actually become great product creators because they write the thing and then the company goes, oh, we should build that um, because it's a more compelling message. Uh, so just keep that in mind that even if some of these, when you go through and do these, if some of them don't naturally fit, try finding ways to make it work. Um, only once you've actually filled it in once or twice, can you go and say, no, this won't work for me. Don't look at this and say, no, this won't work for me. Okay. Now let's move over. I have a different screen that I'm going to share with you to go through and uh, walk you through how some of these can look. So I've decided to use whimsical as an example here. Typically all I do when I'm looking for an example is open up 
my Chrome and see what the most recent software is that I have there. Um, and Whimsical was something I was working in anyway. So I went to the Whimsical homepage. This is it. So because we're talking particularly about value proposition headlines on homepages for software or SaaS, uh, this is a perfectly great place to start. And everything I'm going to show you here, like using these formulas, there's nothing. It's not a commentary on Whimsical's current homepage headline. Okay. So the first value proposition headline that we talked about earlier was change, transform, turn thing they have into thing they want, where I recommended that you start with the thing they want and then go in and figure out the thing they have. So let me show you what that would look like if we were to re basically, we're not saying this the same way. We're going to take that formula and based on what I know uh, after reading the site, we're going to try to redo it. So in this case, we have transformed scattered ideas into clear maps and plans. So this is the thing that they want. I come to Whimsical, I want to organize my thoughts, clear maps and plans. And so I could say into organized thoughts, but that's not going to be as like punchy because what is an organized thought? An organized thought is typically a map, right? They're a map, a plan, a flow chart, a wireframe, all of these things. So, um, but we don't wanna be too specific with one thing because you can do a doc as well. So I have, this is the thing that you want. Transform is the word that I went with. We could say change or turn. I like transform because we don't see it that often in software and transformations are what people buy. Um, scattered ideas is the thing that they have right now. So what we've done is the verb transform, then the thing that they have into, just like the formula says, and then the thing that they want. Now underneath this is where we would say how. So oftentimes people don't know what to do with a subhead when they're writing a homepage hero. This is just simply if you have your value proposition or what you hypothesize might be a value proposition for your prospects, if you have it as your H1, then your subhead, your supporting copy should explain how. So tell me how you're going to do that or show it to me, whatever makes sense. All right, let's move on to the next formula, which was desirable outcome of product from no brainer makers. Beautifully organized ideas. That's the desirable outcome of the product. So when I go to Whimsical, I probably want beautifully organized ideas from experts in visual design. Now, I don't know if this is true, right? And so as you go through and you're like, I don't know if this is true either, just know you're not alone. Just because you write this down doesn't mean you're going to fall in love with this headline or that your team will. But what's really useful in using headline formulas and knocking out a bunch of headlines is you're chipping away at this um, guessing thing that happens with headlines where it's exhausting to try to, it's mentally exhausting to try to just like keep coming up with new headline ideas. So you typically rewrite the same thing again and again until it's just like so flat and boring. What's good about this is this is something you might never have said otherwise. It might not make the cut in the end, but now your brain is opening up. There's new little parts that are firing and that's all good for what you're going to write next. And plus this might work. <laughs> this might be the one you go with. All right, the next one is one of those more common value proposition headlines, the adjective noun for primary use case. What's interesting here is that Whimsical is the United uh, Unified Workspace for Thinking and Collaboration is basically the adjective noun for primary use case. So they're already using that standard value proposition formula. Um, I've put it here. I wouldn't say that I would ever lead with the unified workspace. Uh, it's a really... Um, there's something militant about it. I don't know. It doesn't have a great, it doesn't have a lot of charm as a word or real resonance. Um, so I wouldn't do that. Workspace might be good. Thinking collaboration could be great. I would rethink this adjective and I'd recommend that you always, particularly in headlines. Now, again, they didn't write this as a headline. I did. I turned their subhead into headline. Um, but if they did, if anybody did, no matter what, when you're writing a headline or an H1 or a crosshead, H2s, H3s, everything down the page, these are key things that you have to, like your, your prospect is going to read this. Every word you use needs to be carefully selected. 
Okay, so let's move on to the next one, the fourth of five, the adjective way for your segment to take action, get an outcome so you can and then benefit. This is a long one. The fast way, so we have down here, they talk a lot about speed. Um, they have clarity as well, but I'm leading with speed for this message. The fast way for marketers to organize ideas and quickly visualize your thoughts. It's not beautiful. It's not beautiful, but it might do the job just fine for those people. And I don't, I mean, I don't mean just fine. I mean, it might do the job better than where great ideas take shape because this is, I can understand the value here. Like it's what a value proposition is supposed to do. It helps me understand what's going to get better in my life. Like that's, that's what I came here for. So it's the fast way. That's good. So that's their how for marketers to organize ideas. Okay. I know if I'm a marketer, I'm in the right place and quickly visualize your thoughts. Cool. Visualizing my thoughts sounds good. And we've used another speed word. That's really all it comes down to. Now, what I'm not doing here is the original formula has so you can the fast way for marketers to organize ideas. So you can visualize your thoughts or quickly visualize your thoughts. I decided just to break that up into two sentences because it was easier to consume that way. All right, let's go to the final value proposition headline formula. It is how market segment desired outcome without, and then you talk about the barrier or obstacle that's getting in their way, how creative thinkers organize their genius without slowing down. Okay. That's how, let's say it's the market, their market segment is creative thinkers. I don't, I don't know how, it, this could be anything, how marketers organize their genius. What I, what I see too often is people just like cycle through different words, um, different phrases for their audience. And that's perfectly fine. I'm not saying you always have to like commit to one group, but it can be very useful to talk to a single segment and help that person see themselves on the page, particularly if you are a newer business trying to um, gain market share, chip away at it. So how creative thinkers, it could be how business analysts, how marketing strategists, how creative directors, whoever that might be, um, organize their genius. It doesn't have to be genius but I like it. Who doesn't want to be told that they're a genius uh, without slowing down? Again, this is a speed message that they had earlier. So we're assuming that an obstacle previously has been, I don't, I, all the tools are too slow for my fast thinking ways. So help me. And that's what Whimsical with this headline is saying that they do. Those are five value prop headline formulas, but that does not mean you only need to write five headlines with them. You could use each formula to write five different options, resulting in 25 value prop headlines. And the more options you have, the better the chances you'll land on a winning headline. So be sure to push yourself out of your comfort zone with the value props you write. You want a good mix of short, clear value prop headlines and longer, more interesting or more specific value prop headlines for your team to choose from or for you to split test. Your task now is to write 10 new value prop headlines for your homepage. If you love this and want more, we've got you. The next logical step is to take Master of Headlines, our quick action program that's available for a startup friendly price. Use it to write, rewrite, or optimize headlines on any page of your site so you can reduce bounce and increase engagement.